Hi, my beautiful people. I miss y'all. And we are back for episode eight of All Rise. And it's funny because I think it's been two weeks. Let me, sorry, I'm looking at um, my DVR. So yeah, two weeks. And it's so funny because I I didn't cuss my daddy out, but I got an attitude with him last Monday because I thought, no, it did come we missed a week and I was just like, why did my episode not record? Where's my episode? Did you delete it? Did it not? He's like, I ain't delete nothing. Like he's known for deleting stuff though. That's why I was like, did you delete my episode? But come to find out it didn't come on, whatever. So I am back for episode eight of All Rise. Um, Mar Mary Stella in the desert. Um, so where do I want to start it? Let me get Mark's case out of the way. And I was this close to cussing Mark out, but I'm going to let him live. Um, so, sorry, as y'all can see, I got my hair done and I can't stop touching it. I'm so used to just having like a bun or a puff ball on top of my head. So I stayed true to the bun, but I got, your girl got some inches now. So if you see me doing this, all review. I'm sorry. I can't help it. That's just a warning. Um, so Mark had a case where... Uh, the young man was in college and he was pledging a fraternity and his leg is all jacked up. It got screws in it. It's like, I, he has one pants leg and then the other one was like rolled up because his leg is in this contract. I don't even know how to describe it, but there's like screws in it and his leg is open. And, um, his, I want to say his pledge master, is that how it's called? Big brother um pushed him off the roof but the person that was gonna testify for him the witness got locked up in vegas so and luke was shadowing mark this episode as you know like a trainee just to see how it goes so they had to travel to vegas to get the guy out of jail but on their way there because they drove he said he couldn't pay for three tickets which would have been himself luke and the guy that they were going to get out of jail because he got locked up in vegas <clears throat> so he's on the phone with lola telling her that they're driving to vegas and she talking to luke and she's like um make sure you keep my friend out of trouble and it was like she was finna go into detail but he was like D -d -d you're br you're breaking up bye and like hung up on her um, and I'm going to assume he has like a gambling problem and you know, that probably goes back to his dad, you know, once again, daddy issues. And so, uh, when they get there, he has to see a judge. Like he's been, uh, booked already. So it's just like, he's not going anywhere. They can't pay bail until he's seen the judge. And so Mark pulled out his money like, oh, I know what you need. You need something else. And he was like, have your bills been paid this month? Do you need some extra money? And the officer like stood up like, do you want to be locked up right next to him? Because it's just like, Mark, where your attitude coming from? Don't come at that man like that. And he was black too. So I felt the way about that. Because it's just like, don't don't play him like that. Do you need some extra money? You need your, have your bills been paid this month? I was like, oh, so Mark, that's the type of person you are. And so when they standing outside, because... Like he said, the man ain't going nowhere. So they stand outside <clears throat> the police station and he's just like, I hate Vegas. So Luke go back in there by yourself, you know, black man to black man. They having a conversation and he was like, do you know any late night judges? And the man was like, I might. So he look out for Luke um, and they go to a casino and in the casino they find a judge, but he had to play some form of poker to get i guess to get the judge to sign um or to see him you know whatever legalese i don't speak it um <laughs> today i'm drinking uh rim i hate remy but it was given to me as a birthday present and i finally like cracked it open so it's remy and pepsi today it tastes okay but it's can you i'm gonna show this to y'all can y'all see that it's like real frothy and i just i don't like the taste of remy people a lot of people think it's better than henny and i just don't think so it's like it's henny and do say those are my top two um then it's jack 
Daniel's Honey. Then I'll do a uh, Crown Royal Apple. I like dark liquor. I will drink white if I have to, but I prefer dark. Anyway, we're not here for that. Um, so they playing the game. I forgot what it was called. But I'm going to need editing to be a little better because Mark literally slapped down. Because they... First, the judge said two out of three. Then he said six out of ten. But they showed them playing different hand games, and Mark literally throws down the same hand every game that makes him win the game. Um, <clears throat> the same is to be said about the other case with the little girl. Um, Y'all didn't change her clothes. Because when the episode starts off and she's walking into the courtroom, she has on those same shoes and those same pants. All they did was change her shirt, but these are supposed to be different days or whatever. I'm like, y'all y'all can do a quick outfit change. If Judge Carmichael can change out of them sharp-ass clothes she be wearing, y'all can get his girl some more clothes. Um, So, Mark wins. He gets uh his witness. They go back. The guy testifies that as a part of their pledging, they had to jump off of the roof into a nearby pool. Um, the, uh, who was it? Mark's client. He was helping somebody else. And he told them like, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Cause I don't want to do it either. We could just leave. And, um, the big brother who's the defendant told them there's only one way off this roof. And that was jumping into the pool and he shoved him and his leg landed right outside of the pool and he was like the noise that it made was just really bad and messed his leg up to what it is now so that was mark's case now we are on to the prosecutor i forgot was it last episode or the episode before um emily's went against her before i just don't like her i don't like her attitude but it's a case of nobody they're trying to charge the defendant with murder, but there's nobody to the case. And they're going to have his daughter testify. And I'm putting that in quotations because technically she's the mother's daughter and he was the boyfriend. I don't even think they were married. Um, but for the last four years, she's been, uh, you know, his daughter and he's been the only father that she knows. So it's like when she sees him, she calls him daddy, but then I guess somebody been telling her that that's not really her daddy because she'll switch up and be like, <clears throat> Felix, I mean, Felix. And she'll be like, my dad, um, sorry, Felix. Like, so I'm thinking like behind the scenes, somebody was telling her like, that's not really your dad. And come to find out, because she was gone for five days before Felix reported her missing. And um, she used to... She was a drug addict, but she had been clean for two years. She was going to work, going to her, I guess, AA meetings. Like, she was on the right track. So, it's pointing to him, like, why didn't you report her missing? And the day, I guess the day of or the day before she went um, missing, uh, they had a fight. And she threw a vase at Felix, but Felix said that he told... Uh, Marisala that he did it so when she was going to testify against him that was the main point like didn't your dad or didn't Felix throw a vase at your mom and she was just like I think so and the prosecutor was like no you told the detectives that he did and she was like I said I thought he did because that's what he told me um and come to find out she had a best friend who claimed that she heard them arguing in their driveway while uh, Marisala was playing with her friend. And um, I believe she spoke in Spanish saying that he said that to her. And when Emily went to go back to talk to Felix, he like, I like, I know a little bit, but I don't know a lot to be saying what she said. I said, and um, basically, which was, I'll kill you. I'll kill you in Spanish. And he was like, I didn't say that. And so she went to go talk to the detective. Like, <clears throat> if he said what she said, he said, why didn't she, uh, excuse me, like, why didn't, she? well, she asked her that. Like, if this is your friend and your friend was in danger, did you go out and, okay, sorry. She was like, where were you when it happened? And she was like, I was, um, 
I saw this through my window. She was like, did you go out and help her? And like her face just cracked. She was like, no. She was like, did you call the police? No. And it's just like, so your friend was in such immediate danger. You just watched from your window and didn't do anything to help her. And then uh, at that point, Marcella came in the courtroom and Felix been trying to see her. He want to talk to her. He's just like, I love that little girl. Because, um, of course, with the mom being assumed dead and then him being in jail for her murder, there was nobody else to take care of her. So um, she went into foster care. And so they had to stop court, you know, to get her out of there. And then um, they had to go into the chambers because Judge Carmichael, she's just like, you need to control your client because he got up like trying to go to her. And um, she was just like, it's not acceptable. Like he cannot contact her. He can't talk to her. You need to get him under control. And so Emily and Judge Carmichael, like they go back and forth for a minute. And she, uh, Emily was like, you know, your honor, it was not my idea to have her testify. It was yours. And she was like, you know, you're out of line. I made my decision. Um, Long story short, the best friend is the one who actually killed her because they were doing drugs together again. And um, her name was Linda. Linda overdosed. And she got scared and hid her body in her, like, in either in the backyard or the front yard of her house because they said on the property. So her body is somewhere on the property. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Felix gets Marisala back. And it was so cute because it's just like um, the caseworker who was like toting her around. They was walking out the door. She dropped her bag and she ran to him. It was a beautiful moment. But um, at one point uh, when they found out, because uh, the detective went and looked into it and questioned the best friend and she confessed and all that. But it was just like uh, right when that happened, Marisala went missing. But she was missing in their... Um, judge carmichael's secret staircase or whatever so she went up there to talk to her and you know all's well that ends well as such in this case so those two get to be together and emily went to judge carmichael to try to apologize and she was just like you know i'm not your equal anymore for somebody you to spar with like how um lawyers do with each other she's like i'm the judge and i made that call and i need you to respect that and also, her um, Judge Carmichael's mama, she sent her a picture. And the picture was her as a little kid, like, dressed crazy. She had on mismatch stuff that didn't match. But it was them two together. And the whole episode, she just trying to, she keeps looking at the photo and trying to figure out why her mom sent her that photo. But she never called her to figure it out. So, yeah, that was episode eight. Um, Episode nine is coming on tonight. I can't stay up that late. Even I'm on vacation. Well, it is a like a week. Um, I took off four days and then I'm taking off my regular four days. So yeah, I'll be home all week, but I'm still not going to stay up that late. So I'll probably put that review up tomorrow. I'm trying to catch up on all my shows today and I'll probably be doing reviews all day because what else am I going to do? So anyway, um... Let me go watch uh, Love City Law and I'll be back with y'all. Peace.